Our vehicles often reflect who we are. They can signal how we see ourselves, what we value, and even hint at our ambitions. After spending more than a week driving the Ford Bronco through Colorado, we've come to a clear conclusion. This SUV is a powerhouse, built for those who are as rugged as it is. However, owning a Bronco and not pushing it to its limits would be like keeping an Irish wolfhound cooped up in an apartment its entire life. Sure, it looks impressive and makes a statement, but both the vehicle and the owner deserve better. Our test model was the Bronco Everglades trim. Ford offers three engine choices across the Bronco lineup, but the Everglades comes with the smallest, a 2.3-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine producing 300 horsepower and 325 lbfd of torque. This power is delivered through a 10-speed automatic transmission to all four wheels. According to the EPA, the Everglades gets up to 18 miles per gallon in the city and 17 miles per gallon on the highway. Our test vehicle was priced at $58,770, which is close to the Bronco Wild Track, starting at $60,225. However, the Wild Track features Ford's 2.7-liter engine, but lacks the Everglades snorkel, worn winch, and marine-grade upholstery. The Everglades trim is designed with serious off-road capabilities in mind. The marine-grade upholstery is a prime example, soft and comfortable, yet built to withstand anything you might encounter. The dashboard, door panels, and controls are equally rugged, prioritizing durability over the soft-touch materials found in most SUVs at this price point. While this might be a downside for some, it's likely those individuals wouldn't fully utilize the Bronco's intended purpose anyway. The design choices in this SUV are clearly made with off-road enthusiasts in mind. The grab handles are robust and strategically placed, while the switchgear features large buttons and knobs that can easily be operated with gloved hands. Instead of traditional plastic recesses, the door panels use netting, making it simple to stash gear, including oversized water bottles. The front seats are both comfortable and supportive, with a generous thickness that helps absorb the bumps and jolts of rough terrain. However, as a taller driver, I found it challenging to see traffic lights clearly when first in line at an intersection, a common issue in many vehicles. Still, I would have appreciated the option for a lower seating position in the Bronco. There are a few quirks worth noting. The centrally located window switches felt awkward to use even after a week of driving. They're angled towards the windshield, making it easy to hit the wrong switch since you can't easily look at them while driving. The mirror adjustment switch poses a similar challenge. These are minor inconveniences, though, and they stem from Ford's design decision to maintain these features even when the doors are removed. Those who intend to use the Bronco for off-roading will likely appreciate these thoughtful touches. On the other hand, City dwellers who use it as a daily commuter might find these compromises a bit frustrating at first, but they'll likely adapt over time. What might be harder to adjust to is the wind noise inside the Bronco. If you're seeking a quiet, serene ride, this SUV might not meet those expectations. Despite having a sound-deadening headliner, wind noise becomes noticeable as soon as you hit 35 miles per hour, 56 kilometers per hour. While those with a single-piece hardtop might experience less noise, I suspect the difference isn't significant. I think having the freedom to remove the roof in sections, as was the case with our test car, is probably the better of the two options for those who like driving topless. There are also occasional unexpected rock pops that happen, but we'll come back to that. Behind the second row, one finds 36 cubic feet of cargo space. It was more than enough to easily pile in all of the gear that two or three might need for a long day or two on the trails. At the same time, those who need to transport larger items will likely need to lower the rear seats, which limits seating to just two. Under the rear storage space is a cool pull-out camp slash tailgate seat, which was really useful during the week. Thanks to the temperate weather of Colorado, several of us found times where we'd sit outside and use the seat with the rear of the Bronco wide open. Let's end on one small annoyance though. The rear window won't open until the door is about 90 degrees open. That makes access to the rear of the Bronco something that doesn't happen as quickly as one might want. Toyota really nailed it with the roll-down window in the 4Runner. 
tech, Ford offers the entire Bronco lineup with a 12-inch infotainment system. In our use, it was quick, intuitive, and logically laid out. The driver information screen was good too, though not as easy to navigate. Ford offers several driver modes in the Everglades including sand slash snow, rock crawl, mud slash ruts, and more. At the same time, the Everglades doesn't come with the trail cams that the Badlands trim has and we wish it did. Understandably, Ford expects Everglades owners to be in the water from time to time, so perhaps that's why the trail cams don't come standard. Still, they would have been very helpful on some of the terrain where we took the Bronco. In terms of tech that adds to comfort, Ford provides seven speakers, two of which are situated in the roof bars. At times, that led rear passengers to ask me to turn the volume down when it seemed ample in the front. Thankfully, one can simply adjust the balance from front to rear to fix this potential niggle. Piloting the Bronco is mostly a pleasure in a place like Colorado. There are several trails where it shines brightly. For example, we took it deep into the Rocky Mountains back behind Cheyenne and Pikes Peak, and then up into the ski region of Copper, Breckenridge, and Frisco. No matter what sort of ruts, mud, sand, or rock beds we threw at it, this Ford never blinked. Honestly, at times, it felt like bringing an F-22 Raptor to a biplane fight. At one stage, an elderly lady drove by on one trail in a totally stocked Subaru Outback from about 10 years ago. We immediately went to find somewhere she couldn't follow. The Bronco still had zero issues whatsoever. On-demand, electronically locking differentials provided additional grip and confidence from behind the wheel. This SUV isn't too far from an actual Irish Wolfhound in reality. It's rugged, extremely capable, and kind of feels like a best friend deep in the wilderness. Let's circle back to the rock pops mentioned in our interior segment. Once one gets back to the pavement, the bumps of the trail go away, but reminders of it sure don't. At seemingly random points, loud pops and bangs interrupt the peace in the cabin. Those sounds come from the seemingly unending allotment of stones and rocks picked up by the tires. Our test car came with Goodyear Territory MT rubber. Maybe this issue is exclusive to them, but again, I doubt it. Despite that, the Bronco isn't bad to drive on the road. Don't get us wrong, it's not sharp, it's not wildly engaging, and it's not what anyone should pick for a long highway constrained road trip. It sort of wallows about on pavement, but is easy to point and direct. The steering is especially communicative at low speeds, which is a big positive. Coming at this SUV with a more jovial attitude really pays off. It's kind of fun to poke around in traffic with, and the four-cylinder sounds better than any other I've heard. Some of that might come down to the snorkel and having the induction sound so close high and exposed. Either way, at full throttle, one classic Bronco builder told me it sounded like a V8. It kind of drinks fuel like a V8 too, though. I managed 17.3 miles per gallon in mixed driving on the highway, in town and off-road. 